救人兼顾过咗。Members of we form a quorum. To, so let's get started. Item number one: confirmation of minutes. The minutes are for the meeting held on the 11th of uh, November uh, have been sent to members. So far, no proposed amendment have been received by the Secretariat. So, members, can we confirm the minutes now? Thank you. Item number two, issue, information papers issued since the last meeting. Uh, there are three papers. One uh, is a letter from uh, Dr. Joseph Lee concerning the need to conduct a public hearing on baby formula. And Dr. Helen Wong has sent in two letters on two issues, a consultancy study on the wholesale market and also on the food incidents in McDonald's of Japan. All right, if members have no further comments, I hope Proceed to item three. Uh, please invite the secretary to come in. Uh, we have uh, many items for discussions today. Date of next meeting and items for discussion. There will be policy address briefing on the 21st of January. May I remind members that uh, the, the date is uh, 20, the 21st of January 2015, a Wednesday from 8.30 to 10 in uh, room number one, and we'll be uh, getting a briefing from the Secretary for Food and Health on uh, policy areas uh, related to the food and safety and environmental hygiene uh, so far as they are concerned with the uh, 2015 policy address of the CE. And then for the regular meeting to be held on the 10th of February 2015, uh, the, we have got a list of uh, outstanding issues for discussion. The yeah. next meeting is going to be held on the 10th of February uh, 2015, Wednesday. The administration proposed uh, that we discuss, uh, first of all, review on fees for slaughterhouse services provided by the FEHD. Second, review on fees for cemeteries and crematoria services provided by LVHD. And there are uh, number one and number two on the list of outstanding items for discussion. And then third item is update on the latest development on the supply of public niches and uh, regulation of private colour barrier. Uh, Dr. Joseph Lee has uh, written in to the Propose a public hearing on uh, baby formula. It should have been uh, an item for today, but uh, last week uh, I asked the administration to uh, have a discussion on uh, the supply of uh, local live poultry. So that's uh, an urgent item. Some members have asked what we have achieved uh, by spending tens of millions of dollars. And uh, since Dr. Joseph Lee has proposed that we invite deputations, and uh, Mr. Winston Fang has asked for the same. So we might as well have a discussion today, and then we have a deputations next time. And uh, the Secretariat has uh, identified a suitable slot. Uh, that is the 10th of February. We can start uh, at 2, and uh, the meeting will end at 5, 5 p.m. And we can also have the two reviews, two items on review, uh, plus uh, deputations on uh, baby formula. So two plus one items for three hours. Uh, the uh, Coribarium item is not an uh, urgent, so it can be deferred to the uh, March meeting. Any comments from members? If not, then please mark your diary. We'll start at 2 p.m. when we need a quorum of eight members. So we'll start at 2 p.m. 
and uh, go all the way to 5 p.m. And we would also invite deputations on the baby formula. On the next item, the arrangements for separating imported live poultry and lo from local live poultry. Uh, perhaps it's time to invite the deputations to come in. And before they are seated, I would like to inform members that uh, the secretary has uh, prepared information note, and that is CB two six zero six fourteen fifteen bracket zero two for your information. And this time, we have also received uh, twelve replies from uh, organizations and deputations or individuals uh, that uh, they would attend today's meeting. The submission received have also been uh, circulated to members and the administration. This item will take us to 3.45 p.m. Uh, because the Secretary will have to attend uh, the meeting of the panel on health services. I think uh, the Deputy Chairman is also very concerned about uh, the next item, uh, that is uh, agricultural, uh, agricultural development in Hong Kong. We cannot extend the time. They may, he, the secretary may have to go to the next room, or maybe this uh, room is already booked by another meeting. So I'd like to welcome all the deputations. Uh, thank you for coming at such short notice. I only uh, issue the invitations uh, at the end of next week because the Taku Land uh, facility was not ready. So it was arranged uh, in uh, quite a bit of haste. So may I remind deputations and individuals to use the earphone and the mic. Channel 0 is for Channel 1 Cantonese, Channel 2 English. <coughs> Please speak to the mic for care reception. And also, I would like to remind the deputations that the submissions they make to the panel will not be uh, enjoying the protection and immunities under the LESCO Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Mm. Uh, and also, your written submissions uh, will not enjoy such a protection or immunities either. May I remind those in the public gallery that uh, you should note the security measures applicable to the attendance of uh, meetings in this council. And uh, the uh, notice from the Secretariat has been uh, at annexed to the letter sent to your letter. And uh, if there's, there are also copies available the, in this meeting room. And if necessary, please ask for a copy from our security staff. I invite the deputations to speak in the following order, and uh, every deputation or individual will be given three minutes. If you haven't uh, given us your written submissions, uh, you're, you're welcome to do so later, so that we can uh, circulate uh, them to members and the Secretariat. The first uh, to speak is uh, Mr. Poon. Mr. Poon Sok Loy. Well, we are in the retail business. Of course, we would like to have a supply of live chicken for sale every day, whether they come from local farms or mainland farms. And we shouldn't just allow a single supplier, because that would mean that we have a problem with the source of supply. <coughs> And also, in the past 12 days, we had no live chicken for sale. Those the fresh provision shops and market stores uh, had to pay <coughs> rent and had to pay their employees uh, all the same. So we, are, we have suffered a lot. We have uh, sustained the financial losses for the public. 
I mean, should there be an outbreak of the avian flu, we, we would accept such uh, uh, financial losses. It's not like what somebody suggests that we're always asking for compensation. Another point which I'd like the Secretary to note is that for the long-term supply chain of live chicken, I hope can you can have greater confidence in us and also provide greater assistance to the trade. And we don't want uh, uh, <clears throat> to see in Hong Kong the end, uh, th that there won't be any supply of live chicken. Over the last 10 years or so, we've experienced outbreaks of avian flu. The SAR government and the trade had worked very closely together to improve on the public hygiene and minimize the risk for avian flu. And I think we've already, we, uh, we have the best quarantined uh, facilities in place uh, in the world. I hope the government and the trade can have more communication. And I also like to add that I don't want uh, the a live poultry business in Hong Kong to, to vanish. <clears throat> Next we have the Hong Kong Local Live Chickens Wholesaler Association. Mr. Lin, thank you. Regarding the segregation of imported live poultry and local poultry, I'd like to represent the uh, Local Live Chicken Wholesaler Association. I'd like to appeal the government to, first of all, uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, a place for the quarantine of imported po live poultry from China, wait for the results of the test uh, before and if everything is okay, only then will the live poultry be sent to Cheng Sha Wan. Local live poultry has all along been subject to the quarantine system uh, <clears throat> supervised by the Hong Kong SAR government. And so far, we have never had any uh, outbreak of H7N9. And the operation has been, uh, our business has been operating normally all along. If the government were to play the role of the gatekeeper, then live poultry could be supplied to the public in a safe manner. And Hong Kong can maintain its reputation as a gourmet center. So, and all these scenarios will not happen. First of all, there won't be any need to stop the import of live poultry from China. With the quarantine center in place, there is no need to, to put a stop to it. And secondly, when there is an outbreak of the avian flu, we can close down the Cheng Shawan Temporary Wholesale uh, Center. And then for contingency reasons, we go to Takuling to operate the, the supply of live poultry. And the first scenario which will not uh, appear is uh, the need to, uh, to engage a consultant to find out what not the retailers uh, need to sell live chicken. All these three scenarios will not arise if we could build a permanent quarantine uh, facility to uh, inspect live chicken from the mainland and that we wait until the, the, the testing result is available before the such poultry is sent to Chen Shawan. Thank you. Next, Mr. Fung Kin Chung from the Vegetable Wholesale Cooperatives in Guangdong. Thank you. Our cooperatives is very close to a place called Ping Che. I've also gone to the Ping Che Cooperative, and it was consulted because it's located near the quarantine center, and I have gone to consult the views. And they told me that uh, there won't be any significant impact on the transport situation there, because the traffic flow there is not very, very uh, heavy. And also given that this is only a short-term measure, and in order to cater to the public's demand for live chicken, and that the chicken farmers can sell the, their poultry as soon as possible, they support the, 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 the arrangement. Uh, I've also visited, you know, a a farm next to the proposed checkpoint. Uh, the lady who lives there told me that they also support uh, their village head, Mr. Man. That is, in order the public can continue to enjoy uh, live chicken, 
and to cater to the needs of the retailers, uh, they will support the proposal to set up this temporary checkpoint. As for some people who suggest that if we don't import live poultry from the mainland and we rely wholly on local supply, I will not agree with that because there are many food products which are supplied by the mainland, including our drinking water which is supplied by the mainland. If we only uh, you know, uh, uh, make a purchase selectively, there would be an impact. If we only buy small poultry and not large poultry, again, that is not reasonable. To prevent the outbreak of any any uh, 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 disease, it would depend on effective quarantine service. You know, avian flu has broken out in different places in the world. So all we can do is to, you know, <clears throat> do a good job in terms of quarantine uh, and and I hope that all the, the stakeholders, including the poultry farmers and people in the transport business and so on, can really put priority on the needs of the public and so that we can continue to supply live poultry to the public. Next, Mr. Chen Kin Yip from the Federation of Hong Kong Agriculture Associations. Chairman, in the last few days, I think the Bureau has been working hard uh, uh, to help our trade and resolve this problem regarding the supply of live poultry, and I'd like to thank the Bureau for that. I'd also like to thank the Rural Committee of Taku Ling. Uh, they have given a, made a lot of concessions, and the residents have put up with a lot of inconvenience caused by our trade, and we would like to extend to them our gratitude. Also, I'd like to clarify one point. A Mr. Cheng claimed to represent all the chicken farmers in Hong Kong and told the media, or said to the media, uh, sent out messages to the media claiming to represent the uh, poultry farmer, saying that uh, uh, that there should be a boycott, and that threat actually threatens the operation of the entire industry. And our association would like to condemn this gentleman for what he has uh, said. Next, Mr. Wong Yun Tai from. Thank you. I represent the. Young Chickens uh, Breeding Association. I object to go the proposal to ban the import of uh, uh, young ch 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 chickens in, from Hong Kong. Uh, we've been operating the business for 30 to 40 years. If young uh, chicklets are, are banned from import to Hong Kong, their life fluid will be affected. I hope the government will bear in mind that they would like to continue with their trade so that they can support families. I'd like to thank the government's proposal to set up a checkpoint at Takuling so the local poultry can be sold so that we can relieve the backlog in a farm. So we hope that the young chicklets could be allowed to be imported as soon as possible to Hong Kong. The most important thing is that Mr. Cheng Chi Kung had told the media on several occasions that it represented poultry farmers and our industry. He's not a licensed poultry farmer, he's not a wholesaler, he's not in the transportation business, he's not a representative of the importers of chiclets, he is only a director of a private company. I hope the media would know that Mr. Chang is only speaking, uh, 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 he's only representing his own company, he does not represent the industry. What he said was really frightening. A few years ago, we had an outbreak of the avian flu. Uh, 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 and there was no place for, for the quarantine of local poultry. We went to government he off headquarters and uh, suggested that Takuling Farm could be uh, used. Uh, f uh, and Mr. Chang went to the place on the following day and said that he has found this place. But now the government's proposing to use this as a checkpoint, and he objects this time and suggests that there should be a place in, in Kamtin instead. That could be used, and he told the Takuling residents. Originally, the, the Takuling residents agree with this trial uh, scheme, and he said that he would like to supply 15,000 chickens. And in the end, we are not able to to supply our chickens to the market. He told about the, the media he has suffered a loss of three hundred, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. I think the reason for that is he would like to uh, to, to get some conversation from the government. Next, we have. Mr. Kwok Ming Chang from the Vital Health Livestock Development Limited. Thank you. At the end of 2013, the government announced that 
the live chicken supply from the mainland will need to be inspected at the main camp toll. And only when the results of the test are available uh, will the poultry be, be sold. If there's a problem, they will be destroyed. And in that scenario, if that should happen, the Chen Chauan wholesale market will be, you know, sp you know, closed for one day. While I cannot claim to represent the whole industry, but in my personal, according to my personal experience and understanding, I knew at the outset that this is not uh, comparable to international standard. For international standard is such that all imported animals will need to be quarantined. If there's any problem, then they will be culled and they will not reach the market. But this time, uh, what the government is proposing to do is against international practice. And I had suggested at the time that near the border we should find a place to build a checkpoint, if the, everything is fine, only then would the poultry be sent to the Chengshuan poultry market. If there's any problem, such poultry would be destroyed. To ensure that the Chengshuan market will not be affected, the operations of the local poultry farmers will not be affected. Subsequently, the government made a proposal that a checkpoint be built at Takuxing, Takuling, and I agree that this is a good interim solution, but it's not a permanent solution. So uh, now that we have this incident, which is taking place, we and we and I appreciate that we need to uh, go ahead with this uh, temporary uh, measure. But uh, you must understand that all of us are, uh, you know, suffering uh, because of that, uh, because the, the temporary checkpoint cannot help relieve uh, the 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 uh, the uh, you know the backlog of chickens. Normally we now we can only supply a few thousand a few thousand chicken. Normally we can supply more than ten thousand and uh, a farm can clear all the stock in two or three days but now it takes more at least a week or ten days. So how can it help relieve the the, the, the backlog? Again for the wholesalers, if they can only supply uh, two or three hundred chickens and they can't even make ends meet, and some farm, some workers cannot, uh, don't even have, have work to do. Same for the retailers, some of them don't even have poultry for sale. So it's not really going to re resolve the problem. I can only agree that this is a temporary arrangement. I hope the government should come up with a long term plan to build a quarantine uh, checkpoint to ensure that the poultry supply to the public are safe and that all the people in our business, in our trade business will be able to, re to keep the jobs. Next, we have Mr. Wong Wing Nam from the Hong Kong Kowloon Poultry Dealers and Workers Association. Uh, we support the proposed uh, measure. This is actually a solution arrived that after the trade has, uh, uh, you know, at, at discussions with the Secretary. I really support this proposal. Regarding the ban to import live chicken from the mainland, I strongly uh, object to that. The Because it would have an adverse impact. I don't think uh, we should, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, take over the business from 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 the other side. There are some dealers who uh, stage a protest to the government against the government and using the welfare of the public, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. As a bargaining point and threaten to to release like chicken in in the urban area, is really objectionable. For the villagers, they have to put up with the noise, nuisance, and the inconveniences cost. They have generously agreed to sacrifice their sleeping hours and their peaceful environment. Uh, 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 so, for the benefit of the public, and we would like to extend to them our gratitude. The Secretary claimed that during this period of time, he would consider 
or reconsider the central slaughtering option, and we would like to object to that strongly. If you have healthy live poultry on sale in the market, it's, it serves an, uh, another function that is other than supplying fresh meat for the public's consumption. Another function is that these live chickens will play the role of a century. If the live poultry were affected uh, in the community uh, by wild birds and, and poultry, if, uh, if they were uh, affected, infected in our community, and given the uh, given our stringent quarantine facilities, we can detect it immediately, so we can de immediately send out a warning so the public can be uh, more vigilant about the personal hygiene so that they will not so that there will not be an outbreak of the avian flu in our community as for the arrangement for the past uh, ten or days. I would like to ask the administration to give us something uh, expressive in, in nature uh, for those who have uh, lost their employment. Mr. Choi Ming Tun from Hong Kong Poultry Wholesalers Association. If some people are saying that we should not import live chicken from the mainland, I would say this is not possible. Hong Kong is a free market. If you want to have a monopoly, it's against the WTO rules. As for the prevention of avian, avian influenza, well, I would like to make some suggestions. If we have a central slaughterhouse and we have no supply of live chicken, then we are going to see more cases of AI. I can quote the example of Macau. Macau chicken is imported from the mainland, and uh, they also have discovered cases of irregularities. But there was no the people coming down with AI. But uh, there's a price differential between local and uh, imported chickens. And we should just slaughter uh, poultry that that is uh, infected. We should cow such chickens. As a, as a tool to manage public hygiene. And some people have uh, consumed poultry on the mainland because of the price differential, it's, and they contract the AI. I, I believe our system is sound. There's no inherent risk. We have attended. Uh, cases of AI since 1997, but no person has been affected. So the question is, uh, are we trying to prevent AI among the chicken or uh, the poultry population or among the people here? We, should, we have to caref consider carefully how we can maintain a healthy uh, food chain food supply chain, and also we have to consider the uh, affordability of, uh, uh, the, of poultry in terms of the price. Some people have raised all sorts of objections. Some have even proposed that we set up a, a close um, shop. So that's not acceptable. Next, we have Mr. Yong Chilun from Kowloon Poultry Transporter and uh, Portera Association. Uh, we are against the idea of uh, having a single m uh, market. We should have a, ma uh, a diversified market. We are responsible for transportation. We will try to the, minimize the nuisance caused by the operation uh, 
and we want to the administration to do something to enhance uh, employment. At present, only 30 percent of uh, the transport operators are doing some business, and I also want the administration to grant us a month of uh, a rent-free period of one month because uh, many of our colleagues, our fellow operators, are not doing any business. Mr. Liao Lin Chung. I represent Kowloon Poultry uh, Lan Merchants Association. Ninety percent of our chickens uh, we sell here, we sell here, are imported from the mainland, and uh, our overheads are much higher than uh, other operators. We're talking about all sorts of uh, overheads, uh, rents, uh, transportation, and so on and so forth. Uh, we need to import chickens from the mainland, otherwise we cannot make our ends meet. Mr. Choi has referred to the system in Macau. But uh, the arrangement in Macau is more flexible. It's not just fixed at 7,000 chickens. It can be a bit more sometimes. I hope the Secretary can also help us, and we should allow more, a little bit more, if the business is good. Hong Kong has done a very good job all along in the quarantine measures. So we hope that we should come up with the optimal the positioning of Hong Kong, and we should try to prevent uh, uh, an epidemic uh, through quarantine measures. Next, Mr. Lee Leung K. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chang Ji Kang claimed to represent all chicken farmers without asking for our consent. I just have to say that uh, I don't agree with uh, what he has said. And now we have this incident. Back then, uh, the, the uh, contingency measures were set, and now, of course, we have to uh, go down that route. And in the past few days, the uh, backup plan has been working well. I think what's important now is to allow a bigger number of chickens to be uh, marketed. I hope the administration can uh, talk to the local residents and uh, you should uh, relax the rules a bit because uh, we are seeing more and more uh, back, back up of uh, chickens. And uh, if we continue like this, the supply chain will be affected. Next. Mr. Tang Wai Lun from the uh, New Territories Chicken Breeders Association Limited. Good afternoon, Chairman. I represent the Hong the Anti Chicken Breeders Association Limited. We have twenty nine um, farms. We are satisfied with the measures taken by the administration this time. We have more than a hundred thousand chickens now that are being kept in our farms. The situation is getting very serious. Uh, let's hope that uh, more chickens can be allowed to be marketed so that we would not have to keep uh, old chickens in our farms uh, for any longer. If the mainland epidemic uh, situation uh, eases, uh, the, the Bureau should uh, allow us to import the old chickens because some farms uh, rely on uh, such Imported uh, day old chickens for uh, their operations. Otherwise, the chain, the supply chain, uh, will be uh, broken. And after the epidemic has uh, eased, the administration should also take measures to help the farmers uh, and to make sure that they can make a living. Uh, there are 100.3, or oh, the licenses will allow us to keep 1.3 million chickens. 
but uh, for a long, long time we are 200,000 short because in some other old farms what they had to do was to report the uh, the numbers but uh, then uh, there were the contraventions of uh, relevant rules and uh, the licenses were taken back but uh, other farms are uh, are not allowed to expand to take up the uh, the capacity i hope the afcd will allow capable the farms to increase the number of chickens that they can uh, keep so as to make up for the shortfall. And lastly, we would like to make sure that we have a system of uh, local chicken for local market. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank all the 12 deputations. Well, you, ha you have uh, managed time very well. And uh, of course, uh, you are all very experienced, uh, hands on, uh, on this front. And I certainly don't want to see you too often. And uh, Secretary, over to you. Uh, this item would take us all the way to uh, 3.45 p.m. Maybe you can uh, respond, uh, generally respond to the uh, deputations first, and then I'll ask members to uh, speak. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank all the uh, deputations who are from different parts of the uh, supply chain of chickens. I will try. I will try to respond to um, some of the points made, if I can. Uh, uh, we discovered uh, some a sample with H seven AI, and uh, there were repeated checks, and uh, there were more cases uh, uncovered. That's why we had to take some uh, public hygiene measures, and uh, uh, we have to destroy the stock in our uh, wholesale market. And at the same time, the uh, wholesale market uh, had to be suspended. Uh, thereby, the local poultry trade uh, has been affected. Because of this incident uh, last year, uh, some people have uh, suggested that we should have a separation arrangement. There are quite a f few options. We did consider a number of options. For example, it was suggested that we should allow uh, a should provide facilities uh, for uh, before a report, a quarantine report uh, is available. But uh, we have explored this and found this not feasible to protect the local poultry tray and also to prevent the situation whereby the supply of local live poultry will have to be suspended. That's why we want to set up this uh, Taku Leng uh, checkpoint. I think you're familiar with the background. As for whether in the long run we can have another separation facility uh, for the Changsha Wan temporary uh, poultry wholesale market, there's uh, a lot of pressure, continuous pressure for the market to be relocated because no resident would like to have such a market, wholesale market, in uh, near their homes, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we are doing a good job in quarantine. Uh, but uh, uh, local residents would always uh, object to such a facility. So c can we find a, a re another site on top of uh, the site for to re to reposition the Chosa one the temporary wholesale market, I I'm not optimistic at all. Now we have uh, this uh, Taku Lang checkpoint <coughs> available, and after some uh, discussion and arguments, it seems that uh, things become clearer after the dialogue. We all know what purposes can be served by Taku the Taku Lang checkpoint, and that is when, if, if a mainland poultry uh, is found to be uh, affected by the the epidemic, then uh, we have to suspend the operation of the market for 21 days. We should need a facility so that we can maintain the supply of local live poultry, as some deputations have uh, rightly pointed out. Uh, 
that, that is a uh, after our explanations uh, Takulang residents uh, are willing to take into account the uh, needs of uh, Hong Kong as a whole and the needs of the trade and also after knowing more about the facilities on uh, uh, safety and quarantine adopted there and also the fact that we have been trying to minimize the nuisance caused by any noise or, or the transportation uh, operations, although they are still in objections, they, they they are willing to tolerate this for the time being as a contingency program. I'd like to extend my gratitude to the villagers and the representatives of the Takuling village. For the long term, we need to conduct a review. I also feel that with so many members of the industry present here today, I am encouraged to hear them uh, telling us that they understand that while there are different interests uh, 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 for the different stakeholders in the industry, but in order that we uh, continue to have the supply of live poultry and that Hong Kong can maintain its reputation as a, a gumi center, we need to continue to work hard. So I hope that we'll continue to stand united, and that we'll try our best to 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 uh, to uh, work with the the, the industry. Uh, well, the trade has uh, told us that <clears throat> they're not able to. To, to raise the number of uh, uh, poultry that they are uh, that they are the maximum num number of poultry that they can uh, raise, and also regarding the old uh, chicken, when are you going to make a relaxation? Many uh, well, the the market the, the market operators are saying that the business is put on hold. Those who are in the wholesale business and and so on, and the wholesalers are. Uh, uh, again, uh, suffering because they still have to pay rent. So, uh, if I, uh, I'm not suggesting there's any compensation, but can you do something to help them? We now have a supply of 3,800 live poultry to the supply to the market today. It's 4,000. I understand that you can do up to 6,000. If we could increase the supply, could, would you be able to steadily increase supply? Could there be more uh, to be supplied tomorrow? Uh, the operation of the first three days were, were different. On day one, we had one mode of operation. Four uh, vehicles, uh, you know, delivered the poultry directly. There were seven which actually <clears throat> transferred the poultry from one vehicle to another. On day two, uh, the, the vehicles, uh, the trucks, went straight from the farms. And on day three, many of them... Uh, you know, you know, trans transfer the poultry from from vehicle to vehicle. I understand that the operation today was also very smooth, and and also they were able to make improvements in terms of arrival time at the retail outlets. Yesterday, we already knew that the impact on the residents in the vicinity had not been uh, 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 serious. So we've already told our colleagues of in, at the AFCD that today we can supply up to 6,000. But we want to exceed that threshold. So we want to maintain the number of uh, 5,800 as a ceiling. And our colleagues at the AFCD are now in, in contact with the representatives of the trade. We've set a, dead, a ceiling, but ultimately it would be for the trade themselves to, to agree as to what that ceiling should be. What about the old chicken? If you don't make a relaxation, there won't be any, any fresh supply of, uh, you, you know, these. Well, I think we should be able to resume the import of the old chicken within eight to ten days. In principle, uh, Chen Shao Wan uh, wholesale market will be closed for 21 days. It will be, in other words, reopened tomorrow. So the temporary poultry wholesale market will be reopened on the 22nd. 
at which time uh, the live poultry can also be sent to Chunshawan. Live poultry from the mainland, again, the supply can be resumed. Uh, as to when the supply will resume, that's the decision for the mainland to make. But now, is it that you don't allow them to be imported, or, or both sides agree to put on hold? Regarding Dale chicken, we've not put a stop to the import of such uh, chicklets from the mainland. But I understand that the mainland unilaterally decided to, to, to stop the import of such uh, Dale chicken from uh, to, to, to Hong Kong. What about rent reduction as for the impact on the trade? Uh, uh, where uh, chicken will need to be cowed, they are already rule stipulating what the compensation should be. As for the imp other impacts uh, on the industry, the AFCD and the FGHC will need to make uh, an assessment before we decide uh, what could be done. Uh, Vincent Fang, Wong Kok Hing, our Deputy Chairman, and Chen Yun Han, uh, four of them would like to speak. Let's say five minutes each. Mr. Vincent Fang. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank the tray for attending our meeting today. I understand your business is suffering recently. Mr. Secretary, I'd like to be more focused and ask a question regarding the tackling checkpoint. Oh, well, I understand that you were able to locate the site in Takuling and you came to LegCo for funding to build these uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 environmental mitigation uh, measures. As LegCo members, we felt that you should have already had the uh, concern of the Takuling uh, residents before you build this checkpoint. Why, how is it that now that you want to use this checkpoint and now we're now told that uh, poultry cannot be imported to Hong Kong and there's objection from the general public, you have all these incidents happening. When you, uh, you know, ask for this site and when you build the facilities there, did you talk to the residents there? Mr. Secretary. Well, when we started working on this, we had been in touch with the residents in the area, but we always all, we always uh, understood that the residents did not want the uh, the checkpoint to be built there. All we could do was to uh, try our best to explain to them that we were ensure that the checkpoint uh, or the facility would satisfy all the legal requirements uh, in terms of. Uh, 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 environmental pollution and so on. At that time, the facility was not yet put into operation and there was no strong objection. But to be fair, the residents never agreed, said that they agreed to what we were going to do. The attitude all along has been uh, opposed to this uh, 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 suggestion. After we've explained to them that words, words, there was no strong objection, but now that this time we, we need to, now that we need to use this checkpoint facility, uh, some representatives told us something which what what transpired during the interim, and during that the interaction, uh, the uh, residents have expressed uh, put forward uh, more of the concerns. And I've actually uh, asked the, our director to liaise with the tackling residents. Many of the representatives of the residents and the tray has also helped us, you know, uh, you know uh, communicate and explain to the residents. And the residents also had the opportunity to actually visit the arrangements at, at the checkpoint in Takuling. After that, they understood, and after they've understood that uh, there is this aspiration on the part of the general public and that our, the industry is also under pressure and that's why they agreed that we uh, would, uh, uh, would do our op using this checkpoint at Takuling. Several trade representatives also touch on this and I myself also had thanked the Takuling residents although they objected at the scene. After they've understood how we're going to deal with the 
uh, uh, resolve the problem, they at least they were prepared not to object to our using this place as a checkpoint. Secretary, when you came for funds in Letco, you did not explain so clearly all, all the details that you just told us. Well, if I remember correctly, we didn't have to apply for funding uh, in Letco. But even so, the money you spend on the facilities were public funds. Since the residents have not yet given you their promise, they were simply, you know, uh, 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 waiting and see. Uh, and now you've come up with these facilities. Uh, and also right now, there, there are more than 10,000 local chicken that could be supplied to the market, but you said that you can only allow 5,800. So the local poultry farmers will need to supply more than 10,000, but this checkpoint can only handle about 6,000. Well, there are two questions here, Mr. Fang. First of all, we knew at the beginning that the Tarkuling residents in, uh, in principle did not support our, uh, our, our building of a checkpoint there. But very often we need to balance the interests of all the stakeholders. After we've uh, explained to them, and we also felt that this was the only way so that just in case uh, the live poultry from the mainland were tested positive and you need to stop the operation of the Chengsha One temporary wholesale market, then the, this checkpoint could be uh, used as a temporary facility. So I must explain to that the Takulung residents had never you know, promised uh, to let us do this in black and white. But after all the incidents which happened recently, uh, even the Takulung residents have told the media that under the circumstances, they understand uh, that this is the need of the general public and they understood the needs of the industry and that's why they will allow us to do this. Perhaps I should stop here other than thanking the Takulung residents once again and our friends from the trade, most of whom have worked closely with us. For the first few days, we were able to operate the Takulung checkpoint smoothly uh, because all of our friends in industry have you know, done the best. Our friends from the poultry farms, uh, those in the wholesale business and the transportation business, they've all put in a lot of effort to ensure that this checkpoint can operate smoothly. And secondly, you, the residents also felt that we've done our best to minimize the impact, the adverse impact. So uh, again, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the trade. Uh, well, I haven't answered my se the second question yet. You said that we should allow for more live poultry to be supplied to the market. I've heard a similar request from the industry. We understand this time that the AFC, AFCD had been monitoring the situation with our live poultry farmers. They have been monitoring the, the stock of live poultry and the age of the live poultry in Hong Kong. We hope that with this mechanism, at least the oldest chicken could be supplied to the market steadily. And once we started the operation, we need to be careful. And that's why we started with two to 3,000 and steadily increasing the number to close to 6,000 today. Going forward, we only have a few days left. Most of the you know, mature chicken, we don't want them to become old chicken. We hope that they could be supplied to the market in time. Uh, Mr. Fang asked a second question. Since the farms are able to supply 12,000 every day, the targeting checkpoint can only handle 6,000. So is it possible that you would, uh, you know, increase the ceiling so that the chickens that are, which are ripe for the market could be put on su supply to the market? Actually, I've been, went to Chagling with Mr. Lin together. We've stayed there for more than an hour. We understand that this is a brand new operation. The whole trade, especially the transportation and the wholesale industry, will need to adjust. So at the beginning, the operation might not have been so smooth. So that's why we need to, to get the right balance. We have to make sure that the operation is smooth and that no problem is caused.
if a serious problems are caused, if the nuisance is serious, then I believe uh, that the, the problem will come back. And and that is a problem of uh, residents being uh, unduly uh, affected. Mr. Wong Ko Heng, Chairman, I think the, the Secretary, the Under Secretary, and the Trade have uh, worked together well to handle this crisis uh, with the understanding of uh, residents of Taku Leng. I think uh, we should uh, appreciate uh, their efforts. I have three questions. First, this, uh, there's a need for the wholesale and the separation uh, arrangements. We have handled uh, the crisis this time. But for the long term, we have to f work out how live poultry, local live poultry, can be marketed. If there are two separate facilities for local live poultry vis-a-vis -vis mainland imported poultry, then uh, we don't know when the next uh, avian influenza outbreak will be. And now this time is the mainland supply that what caused the problem, and local poultry uh, was also affected. So in the long term, there should be two different wholesale facilities for local vis-a-vis -vis, uh, imported mainland poultry. So would the administration consider this in the uh, in the light of this crisis? And for Chang Taiwan temporary wholesale market, we have said for a long time that uh, it should be relocated away from the uh, urban area because uh, there are more and more residential units in the vicinity. The population density is increasing. Many housing estates are close to uh, to the market. Uh, there are public sector housing units and private uh, dwellings. So the, the temporary market shouldn't be there for uh, forever. So the administration should work out something better for the future, for the permanent separation of uh, imported live chicken from local live chicken. And uh, the third question is, is this. I don't think the Secretary can offer us a solution immediately. It's just like the next topic, and that is the uh, agricultural policy. I hope this uh, problem can be taken up as part of the agriculture agricultural policy. Can this be done? I don't expect you to give us uh, answers right right away. So can you work out the long term arrangement under the agriculture policy? Well, the agricultural policy doesn't cover uh, your subject, your topic. Uh, they are talking about vegetables. I think uh, these questions are bound to be repeated, but I don't mind. Uh, I will just repeat uh, my answers uh, to the best of my ability with regard to the provision of two different facilities for uh, imported live poultry vis-a-vis -vis local live poultry. Every time I go to some sort of I w would be taken to task for, for the Chiang Sao one temporary wholesale market. Even if I do not go to Chiang Sao one, uh, th there are also people who ask us to move the market away. Last year, I uh, mentioned that we should uh, consider who they are uh, f as a replacement for the separation arrangement, but that couldn't be done. Land is in short supply. Even if land is available, what about local people's uh, views? You have to consult them. You have to you have to respect their views. And earlier, there was a suggestion. Uh, that we should go to Yunnong for separation purposes. But I've heard from various sources that once this suggestion 
uh, was made was out and of course I I am the one to task to consider that option but that well a lot of uh, objections have been uh, voiced by local residents although you may not have heard them it's an ideal situation that we have two sep two separate uh, separation facilities. I've worked hard for that, but I haven't been successful. Are we going to able to do that? Well, I don't know. And then your second question is, uh, Mr. Wong, is actually then an, uh, an answer to your third question. As for the third question, well, I would like to uh, reserve my comments for the next item. Chairman has asked me to say something on that. Agriculture policy uh, is about local farming. Not that I don't like the local po livestock or, or poultry trade. Of, although the mainland supply takes up a big chunk of the uh, supply. So whether we are going to expand our uh, chicken farms or pig farms in Hong Kong, I would tell you that the uh, chances are slim. So the scope of uh, our agricultural policy will be confined to farming, uh, the cultivation of uh, crops. So I hope members uh, would uh, appreciate that, that there are limitations. I hope members will not uh, Think that I'm trying to the favor Mr. Vincent Fang, the, the, the secretary was asked to provide short surprise, so short replies. Well, yes, it's difficult, but uh, we should all uh, work together to figure out what can be done. At this time, the trade has suggested that uh, uh, poultry should be the transported from vehicle to vehicle. But what about doing this near the boundary uh, checkpoints? Because uh, we are already doing monitor we are already monitoring the mainland farms. Uh, but what about uh, uh, transportation of chicken be done uh, from vehicle to vehicle? Well, Dr. Ko is very capable. I believe uh, your suggestions can easily be implemented. Secretary, I think that those deputations would understand the suggestion. This vehicle to vehicle transportation is totally different from the suggestions of uh, having a holding facility for mainland uh, poultry wait, waiting for the test results to be out. That means uh, a wait of a few hours. Uh, those in the trade will understand this. And uh, let's not talk about summer. Let's say it's winter. Chickens uh, held uh, for hours in a certain location uh, may uh, give rise to problems. And given that uh, there's limited space at our boundary uh, checkpoints, uh, th that's not going to be easy. Uh, last year, uh, my two colleagues can bear witness to this. The first thing I did was to visit the uh, Mankam To, the, the uh, boundary close area. I did not manage to find any land <laughs> so that we can have a facility to allow the main chickens to be held and, and weighed. For the, the for the few for the number of hours required, and we're talking about two different separation arrangements uh, when it comes to uh, local poultry vis-a-vis -vis imported poultry. We are talking about separation of uh, local live poultry because uh, it's about uh, separation of uh, chickens for different uh, retail shops, retail outlets. So we want to prevent the cages from uh, being unloaded from the uh, vehicles, and then they would uh, use the tail uh, tail plant to uh, to move the cages from vehicle to vehicle. I I, I try to find land near our uh, uh, boundary close area, but I did not succeed. 
Deputy Chairman. Well, so live chicken supply uh, was suspended in this incident, and then uh, whenever I go, people tell me that uh, your the traders are saying that they would release chickens in the urban area. I have to clarify this. We have never said we're going to do that. We would like to do provide a good separation facility uh, in cooperation with the government. And I would uh, seriously reprimand those who are, who suggest that uh, chickens should be released to protest. Uh, Dr. Ko has said that uh, a lot of pressure has been brought on him to uh, relocate uh, Chosawan temporary wholesale market. I understand this, but Hong Kong people should consider the long term. Future and uh, the unfair unfair pressure uh, brought on the trade. Uh, we consume beef, chicken meat, uh, pork, and uh, other poultry, but we don't like poultry farms to exist in Hong Kong. We don't want to have any facilities uh, that may uh, create nuisance. But but we are we we allow them to to be operated uh, say on the mainland as long as we can import uh, the poultry and the foods we need. But in the long run, where can they be operated? I think people of Hong Kong should uh, carefully consider the long term future of the trade. And uh, some people do not understand why the. Um, Number of uh, chickens uh, to be handled at Taku Lang will be kept at six thousand. Well, that's the consensus reached with the residents. It's not the uh, capacity of the facility. Uh, we have uh, more than ten thousand chickens supply to our market. If we can find a suitable operation mode, maybe we can uh, establish. A platform involving the local residents so that we can uh, fine tune and enhance the temporary arrangements, and then we may be able to exceed the uh, quota of 6,000. I hope uh, the administration would work hard to achieve this. Uh, like, we were, like, like we we're all going to try hard. And also in the future, will the administration consider? Uh, doing more, you are not going to issue more the poultry farm licenses, and you are not going to allow uh, more licenses to be issued for the supply of uh, freshly uh, slaughtered chicken. Uh, so, how can we allow the, a sufficient number of uh, retail shops be established to the market here? All the chickens kept in the 36 farms in Hong Kong. First of all, with regard to the scope of the supply chain and the f and the chicken farms, uh, the last administration uh, handled a, s a similar incident of AI a few years ago, and uh, then there was a suggestion. And then uh, the, the consensus was reached, and we are now to left with the uh, the scope of uh, the trade uh, as it is for years. Uh, well, we have proved that things are working well. We haven't got uh, major local uh, problems. And if we are to ex ex expand the scope of operation, well, we have to proceed with caution. As just like Mr. Ho has said, if uh, there are th the number of uh, retail shops dwindles, uh, would that have an implication for the farmers? Yes, we would uh, monitor the situation. I've asked. Uh, I would, uh, from time to time, ask my colleagues to update me on the figures on the number of shops. Over the years, uh, the change is not significant. We'll continue to keep things under <coughs> review.
six thousand concerning six thousand. Well, you are going to uh, increase it to five thousand eight hundred if things work smoothly and there's been no nuisance. Can you talk to the residents to increase the cap again? We all said this once already. Why is it that they're tackling residents this time? After we've suggested that we really need to use the checkpoint there, the, and there was a, a stronger reaction from them because there had been some interaction between uh, the two sides, which I shan't uh, dwell on. Given the stronger objection, we had to do a lot of work. We have to do a, make a lot of effort, in also including the part played by our friends from the industry who had helped us liaise with the targeting residents. The Bureau has also done some work. The villagers then suggested that given this condition, we can, uh, for the time being, they will not object to our operating this checkpoint. So at the beginning of the operation of this checkpoint, uh, I hope that we can adopt a safe approach and then steadily increase the number. We certainly will continue to lay with the tackling residents, and I can say in public once again that after, other than this incident, uh, and in light of this incident, we've built up this platform for communication. Our Bureau will continue to uh, liaise with the residents in the area regarding matters which are of concern to them, including the, the question of the checkpoint. We only have eight to ten days left. We'll have to look at the age distribution of the poultry in our farms and see whether or not the quota that we now use can you know, reduce the pressure on the oversupply of uh, ripe chicken to be supplied to the, to the market. And as to whether or not we need to change that number, uh, we ask the AFCD to clearly, carefully assess the situation. But we certainly will continue with the liaison with the residents and the tray. Chen Yunhan. Thank you. I'd like to first of all thank uh, deputations for coming to meet with us. Some of them are old friends. And when we first had the outbreak of avian flu, uh, we really have some heavyweight representatives from the tray uh, meeting with us today. Actually, the trade had actually worked closely with government, and we've been able to 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 to, to uh, uh, cope with the situation each and every time. Although in your paper you say that uh, you ask whether or not we need to continue to have supply of live chicken in Hong Kong, uh, Secretary, I think you need to be careful here. You must tell us. That if you can tell us that there won't be any supply of live chicken in the future, we've been debating this for more than 10 years. We've already built up uh, a supply chain for uh, chilled chicken and also live chicken. So the question is uh, well, these deputations have not just come here for the first time. When we first at the problem of avian flu, uh, they have already been e expressing their concern. Deputy Chairman, your predecessor, Mr. Wong Yong Khan, had done a lot of work, and as a result, the train has learned a lot of ex quite a lot of experience. About nine to ten months ago, when uh, something happened to the live poultry uh, from mainland goes wrong, yeah, the secretary talked about the uh, you know. A site at Fuding out. I'm familiar with that place. I asked the Fuding out residents whether or not about their views. It is next to the the Indus River. And then I told them about the tackling checkpoint. I asked them compare if we compare the two sites, which one would be closer? Is that definitely tackling? The secretary and work hard to get the understanding of the residents, and that is really commendable. Certainly the officials have actually, and the residents have adopted a given tick attitude. But in the long term, I think we need segregation. It's like nine to ten months at Fuday Ao. It's very difficult to find a new site in Hong Kong, strictly speaking. 
we still have plenty of land. Uh, we have more than 3,000 acres of farmland which are idling. If we really have the determination, we can find a site which is remote from residential development. Why don't we, you know, think harder uh, to find such a site? I'm sure the secretary is a very capable person. Actually, some deputations have approached me about this. Now, uh, we we've worked after more than 10 years. People in the industry, the public, and the people in the market. I think people still want live chicken, therefore you have to resolve the problem of segregation. This is going to be an important task for the Bureau. Otherwise, in those days, there were even more people involved, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the transportation workers, uh, those who slaughtered chicken and so on. So, Secretary, you must answer my question. And I can fully uh, empathize with uh, the difficulties that you have to uh, face. But if you do have such a policy in place, that is, we're going to continue to have supply of live chicken and chilled chicken. Until such time, there won't be any more supply of live chicken. So I think when there is still demand, for live poultry, uh, it's very hard for us to find an alternative site, but I believe the Secretary certainly would be able to come up with a site, otherwise he wouldn't have suggested Fu Deao uh, at the time. So somebody must have made this, suggested that to you. So Secretary, you told – well, segregation is important. I think we need to ensure that you know, uh, local chicken and chicken from mainland will con should continue to be available in the market. I just like to refer, add one more point for Ms. Chen's consideration. We proposed the, the site at Fu De Ao, and uh, what we proposed, uh, how, how we we proposed to use Fu De Ao to segregate the mainland chicken at Takuling. If we are talk, we are going to use that to segregate the poultry from mainland. I would not have the confidence that I will have the understanding of the residents there. So the total different. I think the secretary, you know, pretends to be an expert, uh, but I don't agree with what he's saying. If we talk about the supply of live chicken and chilled chicken, I think segregation is very important. You talk about chicken from the mainland, but ten months ago, when you talk about food, you are talking about segregation of chicken from the mainland. I don't think I've mixed it up. I'm not saying that uh, you, you're insinuating that I've mixed it up. No, he has not done that. He's saying that uh, Takuling is going to handle local poultry, and food is about chicken from the mainland. The original proposal is that we will steadily do away with live chicken. Understand? We're not going to discuss that. You're not the first member to uh, suggest that we should segregate local live poultry and poultry from the mainland, except that they can't not find a site. You're not suggesting you should find a site in Phu Dei Ao. Well, there's so much land in Hong Kong, I, I'm not convinced that you, we won't be able to find a site. Actually, I have worked very hard. Uh, to help the un industry understand the difficulty that we are facing, so that we are willing to work together, so that uh, the contingency mechanism can work at Takuling. Some representatives call this a safety valve, and I think that is a very apt description. Ms. Chen, I think your time is up. I hope. So, regarding whether we are able to find one or two more uh, alternative sites to segregate live chicken from the mainland, I hope there will not be, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
excessive expectation. Ms. Chen, I think you have overrun already, and you've spoken for, for 4 minutes 50 seconds. And still three more members have yet to speak. And we're sure to finish at 3.45. Federal Fung. Chairman, I have three questions and comments. First of all, overall speaking, the I think we have a problem with the supply chain for live chicken. It's a problem that has not just arisen today. It's a long-standing problem. The government always claimed there is no land. Uh, they always use this as an excuse when dealing with all kinds of problems. Same law argument applies when they talk about the uh, lack of land to build homes for the elderly. Uh, there's not enough land to build housing and so on. There's always the excuse to, for the government failing to, 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 to tackle any problem. I think eventually you still have to come up with some land. Otherwise, you can't, the administration will be stuck and we won't be able to do anything if there's no land. We have this problem with the chicken from the mainland. The question is that after you've checked the poultry from the mainland, is there a place for you to hold them and wait for the results? While you're waiting, they shouldn't be mixed up with the local poultry. So you have to find a solution there. So we can only suggest possible sites to you, including Fude Ao. Uh, it should be for the government to decide which site will work and which site will not. You cannot always tell us that there simply is no land, and therefore it won't work. And secondly, I've also met with the residents in Takuling and also our friends from the trade. The Takuling residents told me clearly that they definitely will not accept uh, the administration uh, you know, making this uh, tackling checkpoint a permanent facility. So is there an alternative site uh, that the government can use to replace the tackling site? The residents are willing to, ex to, to, to agree now, but eventually they will not want the facility to be there permanently. My third question is this. Talking about live poultry. Uh, in Hong Kong, we already have uh, our own brands of live poultry. We started five years ago. Uh, since uh, for five years, we have not had any outbreak of avian flu in Hong Kong affecting local poultry. So I think we have already built up a very good system, and if it were a successful system, we should encourage that system to, to rather than uh, trying to, to replace it or, or stifle it. Chairman, I'd like to uh, first respond to Mr. Fung's second question. You're correct in saying that the targeting residents had suggested uh, certain conditions and terms, but I believe that this really depends on whether the trade and the government can continue to work closely together. Of course, we don't want to use Takulang checkpoint at any time. But if, like this time, Uh, we've been trying to work things out in cooperation. Uh, I'll continue to talk to Takuling residents. But if we have a lot of disputes, then what Mr. Fung says uh, will come to pass. I don't want to see that. And I want to see a repeat of uh, that scenario. How about my second and the third question? We have no AI, local AI cases for five years. Is that something uh, that we should be happy about? And should we develop our system, uh, the local model? So you want to have uh, more local chickens kept here in Hong Kong, or as some of your friends have uh, suggested, that we should 
ban the import of uh, mainland chickens. I did, never said that. If we have a local, healthy poultry industry, can we expand it? So are you suggesting we should allow more chickens to be kept locally? Yes, if the market allows this. You ask whether I'm just advocating uh, keeping more chickens locally. I'm not saying that I, 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 we should uh, ban importation of uh, live chickens. Hong Kong is a free market as long as uh, the chickens are healthy. What kind of uh, answer do you want to get from the secretary? Well, the branding of local chickens, for example. Are you suggesting that uh, we should allow local farms to keep more chickens? I'm saying that this uh, model can be developed in Hong Kong. I'm not a chicken farmer. I cannot tell you how to develop the, the tray. We have a good model, in my view, because we haven't got any local AI AI cases for five or three or five years. I agree with you. Local chickens uh, are themselves uh, a brand, and people have confidence on local chickens. Can this uh, branding be uh, taken forward? I don't think I can should allow this. If this uh, brand is successful, can this brand be allowed to the run on its own as a separate system? Well, I don't know what the brand is about. Local chickens are a brand, in, but in some aspects, uh, we are sort of uh, linked. We are linked to mainland chickens. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Fung, this is not a time uh, for me to be engaged in a, in a debate with you. Mr. Chan Chi Kin, maybe uh, the secretary uh, doesn't like uh, the term Hong Kong chickens for Hong Kong people. So Mr. Fung was trying to express it in a roundabout way. If you look at press reports, uh, we would have thought that uh, the tray uh, was uh, arguing fiercely with the administration, but uh, from what we have heard, the trade uh, is very positive about the uh, separation arrangements. So let's look forward. First thing I'm concerned about is Takuleng. The residents uh, tolerate this this time. They do not put up a lot of uh, resistance. Maybe in the expectation that this is one and one off arrangement. What if uh, next time we need to do it again? What is the policy direction? And the secretary has uh, sort of suggested that if the di interaction continues to be good, uh, then we would uh, be able to use tackling again. All right. Say, let's say this case is handled uh, to to the satisfaction of all. Uh, are you going to enhance anything in Takulan in terms of uh, physical facilities, in terms of uh, uh, psychological the preparedness and and uh, support? Uh, the secretary may, may not like this, this term Hong Kong chickens for Hong Kong people. Uh, we are not talking about a one-track approach. Well, if uh, there are more AI cases with mainland chickens, and people may say strongly that we should not be affected by the mainland, and if we ha can have a sufficient local supply, maybe we should allow that to happen. But according to the paper, uh, this may not happen. Or maybe, uh, like Mr. Wong Koching has said, uh, people may change their habit. They may uh, instead consume the chew chickens. Well, I think this is just uh, expectation uh, management, uh, because uh, every time he would put such uh, 
suggestions in the last part of the paper of his paper. Are you going to just uh, eliminate uh, the poultry industry in Hong Kong ultimately? Well, we're talking about uh, if we're talking about enhancement, we're talking about enhancement to the operation uh, with. Uh, We will try to uh, understand more about the recent operations, and then we would uh, try to minimize impact. Should the, the arrangements or the operation has to be triggered again? Our local residents and the tray and I myself uh, have uh, taken a good look at the operation. Certainly, there's something we can do better. For example, uh, noise uh, insulation. And uh, if weather permits, we're going to do more in the coming few days uh, in terms of uh, better sound insulation. What's the stance of the residents? Are they going to tolerate this time and uh, and are they going to be cooperative? Well, you are talking about how we uh, see the stance of the residents. Well, the residents is all are also the assessing our stance. Uh, this is a continuous uh, process of interaction. As regards local chickens and uh, mainland chickens, in some cases they are separate. Sep Segregated. Some of the chickens are reared locally. Uh, you can just say they are Hong Kong chickens, but many so-called local chickens uh, were the old chickens imported and then reared locally. And then you have heard from some deputations why the importation of the old chickens. Uh, uh, has been suspended, and that may lead to a, uh, a breakdown of the supply. So it's not easy to uh, have a clean uh, and uh, clear cut uh, segregate separation of the two groups. Dr. Helena Wong. Uh, last time we said in the last term we wanted we said we wanted to have a segregation. So as to reduce the risk of cross contamination, and the secretary said land would be difficult to come by, and you know that uh, many people have uh, uh, problems uh, to living with uh, the uh, temporary wholesale market in Chiang Sai One. You know there are four now there are four big housing estates there. I know it's difficult to try to find uh, a replacement site. And now Takulang residents are the opposing to the uh, checkpoint, so it's difficult. If we want to have to take care of the interests of the poultry industry, and also the people's uh, preference for the live uh, chicken over chewed chicken. I I don't see in your long term policy that we are going to be so sufficient in terms of uh, live chicken supply. In two thousand and eight, you took back uh, you you uh, took back the licenses. In the past, uh, we consumed a hundred thousand. Live chickens per day, and now it's fifteen thousand. Many more people are uh, consuming chewed chickens, and only thirty thousand chickens are the local live chickens of chickens. Uh, can we just stop the uh, importation of uh, mainland chickens so that you don't have to find uh, another site for a separate uh, facility? Can the local farms uh, be able to uh, say uh, keep five thousand more to ensure the supply? Let me say it once again my response to this suggestion, which has been repeated time and again. 
I will uh, uh, ask. I would like to ask members to refer to the views expressed by the deputations ex as expressed today. First, uh, can we, in the long run, maintain a local supply of chick live chickens? And do away with uh, importation of mainland chickens. Well, we did try this for four months, uh, for a stretch of uh, six months, seven months. We did try this, but in the long term, uh, my stance is clear about this. In the long run, this is not sustainable. There are reasons for that. First. Some of the Dale chickens uh, for local farms are imported, as I've pointed out. The, uh, just a moment ago, some deputations uh, queried why the, the importation of uh, Dale chicken has have been suspended, and uh, in the f past few years, uh, we d we have been doing well. But can we say that there will be? No AI, no risk of AI with local chickens. I think even uh, poultry farmers uh, would uh, agree that we have been working hard, we have been doing well in reducing the risk. But can we claim that there's no risk at all? I don't think so. Even advanced uh, e uh, economies. Where they use more advanced technology to to uh, keep chickens uh, have been affected by AIs recently. So th there are two good reasons in support of this stance, and also last year we suspended importation of mainland chickens for a long stretch. At what point? Uh, at some point, uh, the price fluctuated, and uh, the public and the retail trade uh, did have uh, some <coughs> uh, strong views about the situation. So, for a short uh, period, <coughs> we can uh, suspend importation, but I don't think it's sustainable in the long run. <coughs> Chairman, I I, th I think I have to respond to that kind of uh, op a view. For example, uh, if you say that uh, there will be f price control, I don't mind that you supplement your views to more questions. But today we are talking about local life sub uh, local life poultry supply. And whether we should uh, discontinue importation of mainland uh, poultry, and of course uh, your time is up, and uh, this is also time's up for the uh, agenda item. So uh, I'll conclude our discussion here. I'd like to thank all the deputations uh, for coming, Mr. Tang. You put up your hand several times, uh, but we will. Uh, 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 but I've been not able to give you the time. But anyway, thank you very much for attending our meeting today. With that, we'll move on to the next item: sustainable agricultural development. I note that Mr. Wong Heng has already put up his hand. Deputy Chairman is the second member to speak, and attending our officials attending our, our discussion for this item are uh, the Secretary, Dr. Ko, and also the Permanent Secretary. I think only Mr. Fong may not need to be here uh, for this item. Uh, so this is about the sustainable development of agriculture. Uh, when the discussion for this item is open to all eligible members, the Secretariat has also prepared a background brief for us. And this is CB two bracket two five sixty eight stroke fourteen fifteen bracket O three. Secretary, I know that at least six members have indicated that they would like to speak. 
So uh, could you very briefly walk us through the paper, Secretary, and then I will decide how much time I shall allocate to each member. We will schedule you to go until 4.25. Chairman, if members would like more qu time for questions, I can do away with the uh, uh, briefing. Uh, it's all right if members have already read the paper. Okay, I'll read out the names of, my, of those members who will be asking questions. Wong Ko Hing, Patrick Hong, W. Chairman, Sit Ho, Chen Chi Chin, Helen La Wong, uh, Michael Teen. So we have seven members. Shall we say four minutes each? Uh, questions and answers inclusive. Mr. Wong Ko Hing, four minutes. Thank you. The government has now launched its new uh, agricultural policy, and regarding the consultation paper, I would like to express my welcome, and I'd like to also commend the administration uh, uh, for this, because eventually Dr. Cole has done a good job, and the last administration, if members still remember, at once suggested that we should uh, disband the AFCD. At that time, uh, the Secretary, you may not be aware of this, I had expressed my strong objection. Uh, you can ask me to corroborate. Uh, uh, I also lodged my strong objection to this, together with Mr. Wong Yong Kan. Uh, we were successful in, in uh, with our objection. Otherwise, the AFCD would no longer uh, exist. Neither would the sec director, uh, and we wouldn't have this uh, uh, excellent uh, product. So I think the current administration has done the right job. In Hong Kong, we need agriculture, even though uh, the industry, uh, in the past, we do not have uh, appropriate policies to support the development of this industry. Agriculture has been in decline, but now the administration is trying to rectify the problem. The Bureau eventually have launched this consultation paper today, and I'd like to express my support for this. And now I'd like to come to the crux of my question. If we only talk about cultivation without horticulture, uh, that is uh, a bit regrettable. The Secretary explained the reason for this, and, and the Secretary said that he will fight for this, I think only members use the word "fight for" something. I, I'm surprised that the secretary is using the same words again today, telling us that he's been fighting for more land uh, to no avail. So this new agricultural policy doesn't include fishery, but anyway, it's better to have to have a new policy than no policy at all. So in your paper, you propose to help the farmers and you propose a five-year standard lease for farmers. Is five years too short a period because it takes time to, 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 to grow crops, and you need to go through a process before the land could be made fertile and the spe crop species could be improved. So could you allow for a longer period than five years, making it to seven or eight or even ten years? Could you make that relaxation? And second, according to the information available to us, we have 4,523 uh, hectares of farmland. But those which are constantly sub under cultivation uh, there are only 729 hectares. There are 3,940 odd hectares which have been abandoned. So, when you launch this policy, Secretary, is it possible for you to, uh, to reactivate the 3,700 odd hectares of, uh, uh, of farmland? Uh, you only have 20 seconds left, Mr. Wong. Secretary? I think I can only respond to the question regarding the five-year period. Compared with the present system, uh, present situation, uh, right now some farmers who wish to lease land are not able to, 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 to do that. And even if they were to, to obtain a lease, successfully obtain a lease, they may not get a five-year guaranteed lease. So five-year already provide, uh, you know, some certainty. Certainly members can freely express their views to whether or not five years is enough. But we do have a mechanism to ensure that during those five years, uh, 
uh, I mean, if they satisfy certain conditions, uh, they can renew the lease after five years. We're using public funds to resume certain land, and after the land has been leased to the farmers, we want to ensure that the land is used to the the, the, the the purpose purpose we originally intended for those land to be used. It's not that uh, there won't be any renewal. It's just that you need to satisfy certain conditions before the lease uh, could be renewed after five years. We are taking part in the management of the agricultural industry. Only then can we come up with such a policy. I mean, uh, presently, industry farmers will approach landlords uh, and negotiate the lease, and there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, in that process. Mr. Wong Kok I'm sorry. You've already exceeded your time. Mr. Frederick Fung. Talking about agriculture, we have several thousands of years of history and we have a lot lot the farmers have accumulated a lot of wisdom. Uh, 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 farmers would grow vegetables or flowers or engage in fishery and horticulture. Well, agriculture is very often described as a cycle. In the New Territories, we already have uh, in the farms where the farmers grow vegetables and also, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, operate the fish pond. And also the feces of the poultry could be used as fertilizers for crops. I've also visited the farmers in Taiwan and I've learned that some farms in the mainland operate like a whole system. So that uh, uh, you, you, it operates like a cycle and everything could be reused in a sustainable manner. You've taken out one, one part of that cycle. Uh, it, would that really work? The traditional wisdom of the Chinese farmers and the model which is still used in some other places that is you can actually uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, do several things together uh, other than farming and secondly I think I've learned that in Europe uh, sometimes uh, farming can operate on a very small scale uh, people can even uh, grow crops in the front garden or back garden. Of course, we may not be able to do that in Hong Kong uh, for people, uh, uh, but still, at least we can take this concept home. Uh, can, can we further expand this concept? Well, let me explain again. Uh, this time we're basically talking about cultivation of crops. The uh, animals that we keep, basically we're talking about chickens, pigs, and fish. For chickens, we already had a discussion earlier. Uh, so long. Uh, we are sticking to the present scale uh, because of the risk of an, of an outbreak of avian flu. For Picks. We need to have proper sewage uh, uh, mitigating measures uh, because the nuisance cost to the vicinity is bigger. So we certainly want to consider pigs. Talking about fish, we have not ruled out a limited, uh, you know, coexistence of, you know, crop cultivation and fish farming. Of course, we do not want all the farmland to be converted into fish ponds. But if there is, if it is done on a limited scale, and if our experts can can ensure that the model satisfied our requirements, we certainly will not, uh, uh, you know, uh, ban that. That is a combination of, uh, you know, cultivation of crops and and fish farms. But I think in Hong Kong, people also, you know. Uh, you know, uh, raising fish for aesthetic reasons, and I've also heard of people leasing land in new territories and operate fish farms uh, and and grow fish uh, which are for decorative or for or or, or for for appreciation. What I'm saying is the government can adopt a wider uh, perspective. 
because people are already doing this. Deputy Chairman, first of all, I'd like to represent the agricultural sector to express my welcome to this new consultation paper, although it has not covered all the industries and sectors in our trade. Uh, and uh, what Mr. Wong Kok Heng has not, did not have time to talk about, that is horticulture. But this is already uh, a major step forward compared with the previous administration. But then the Bureau will be also under all kinds of pressure. For example, the difficulty of resuming land, and also how can you select a site which has not yet been subject to planning, and also a site which has limited development potential. How can you find such land? And secondly, uh, there is also the question of the lease, uh, because of which uh, farmers are not willing to, you know, invest the resources on on the land given the short duration of the lease, and thus stifling the development of agriculture. So if the government can try to ensure that after satisfying certain conditions, uh, the government can be more relaxed in extending the leases for farmers. And thirdly, for land outside of the farms, how can we ensure that there could be uh, good transfer technology and people who own farmland uh, can uh, have access to a longer lease? And fourthly, in your consultation, what is lacking? is that the land's ordinance is rather rigid. I'd like to ask if the government could, in this consultation paper, listen to the views of the, the trade and see whether you can make some relaxations, for, such as, for example, the, the height restrictions. Secretary, first of all, indeed, we understand that land resumption must satisfy the statutory procedure. And secondly, uh, this is certainly no easy task. And the main reason is as to why we have difficulties in resuming land. The biggest reason is that even in the NT, there are many areas where the land have been planned as agricultural land, but people who own such land can at the same time consider other options so that they can make the optimal, uh, get the optimal value out of the land that they own. And this is only human nature. And because of that, many owners don't want to lease the land uh, for a long period. One reason for that is that they, he may not know whether or not the site that he owns could be put to other development purpose, or there could be, uh, you know, uh, you know, options for him to to extract even greater value from the site. So in selecting the site, we have to, you know, avoid uh, sites which have already been planned for development, and even for sites which are being considered for development or even if the site has not yet been planned for development, but for various reasons, because of its location and the infrastructures there, uh, the, its development potential has been increased, and we'll try our best to avoid those sites. So it's not easy to select such a site. The director and his team has done a lot of work, although he has not uh, visited all the potential sites. but. In areas in the NT where there are farmland, they have tried their best to collect information before we could eventually decide which site we could use uh, and choose uh, uh, to, to, to set up the, 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 the farm. The sit Chairman, first of all, I would like to suggest that we invite uh, deputations to express their views here because uh, many people are interested and uh, landowners may have a may have conflicting interests because they may want to uh, get a lot of uh, compensation so let's ask the 
industry, the practitioners, and stakeholders to come to tell us what they think. And second, what is what's the objective of this uh, agricultural policy? Are we going to uh, enhance our self sufficiency uh, rate of uh, food? Are we going to promote a high quality organic farming to enhance our food safety? Or are we saying that it's better than uh, using the land as a uh, uh, backup yaks and storage yaks? The new generation uh, may be interested in farming. Five years is too short for the preparation and operation. And also for a new farm, they have to invest in uh, facilities and equipment. It's difficult for them to uh, to recoup that in five years. I know that the uh, the rent for small farms farming sites uh, will be much higher than uh, the, the uh, large ones. So I would like the administration to tell us uh, the policy objective of this uh, agricultural policy. Maybe it's a mix of a few things. And the last secretary was very keen to count. Uh, Pigs and chickens, whenever they have a sickness, uh, can the secretary tell us whether he his policy is fundamentally different from that of the last uh, secretary? I think uh, this is just about cultivation. Uh, it's not about livestock keeping. So perhaps uh, the secretary can tell us whether this can be expanded. I don't think he's willing to do that in terms of the objective. It's not a single objective uh, like Ms. Sitho has suggested. On the one hand, we want to say, provide better support to the cultivation sector. It's a. Uh, it's getting uh, smaller and smaller in scope. But people have expectation of uh, safe and quality food. It's the market is expanding. And through this policy on agriculture. We hope that uh, we can do something about the cell sufficiency rate of food and also the diversification of our economy. Uh, we will be able to achieve certain uh, objectives. You may say that this is a rather uh, pluralistic, but we don't have a set target on the cell sufficiency rate. Uh, there are some. Estimate in the consultation document if we can uh, implement this uh, agricultural park concept, or we may be able to increase the uh, the production of uh, vegetables and what and some sort of uh, product uh, values can be achieved. As for the five years, five year. Lease and the restrictions. Maybe you should uh, reply in writing to such big topics. Can we have a reply on the five-year lease restrictions? Well, I have to manage time because uh, we need to hand over the venue, and the secretary has to leave by a certain hour. Mr. Chen Chichin. Uh, many peop people, many organizations have suggested that we have a public hearing. They have written you letters. I don't think you will object. Well, I haven't received any letter concerning the need to have a public hearing. It's just like the baby uh, formula and the need to have a public hearing. 
if uh, we were to have a public hearing, I would have uh, taken out this item because it would be better to have uh, the discussion and the public hearing uh, organized in the same meeting. Well, if we have a public hearing, I hope uh, we can invite other panels to join us and we should involve uh, different uh, bureaus. Last week, we discussed the Hawker policy. It's not something that a single bureau can uh, take up all the matters. Uh, the, but the Secretary uh, has said uh, he was willing to take the lead. It would be better and easier if all the relevant bureaus uh, agree on the direction to take. We're not trying to take land from uh, Mr. Chen Maopo's bureau, uh, Development Bureau, for farming. So apart from the uh, FHB, uh, the uh, CDB should uh, be involved, and perhaps uh, create Hong Kong. Kong can uh, give some funding support to creative uh, agricultural uh, operations. And uh, in Taiwan, they have uh, very innovative uh, practices. Of course, uh, we don't have as much land in Hong Kong. So how can we allow the fellow the agricultural land to be revived for agriculture, or is, are we going to make them e make it easy for them to use it for some other lucrative purposes, or are we saying that there will be a penalty if farmland is not used for agriculture? And now it's suggested that the land will be made available. We should make the best use of the land, and uh, if you want to. Do some farming. Uh, well, uh, I'll allow you to do it by making land available. And also, people are saying that we should uh, be more self-reliant on uh, veg on local vegetables because uh, some some of the vegetables from the mainland uh, are not uh, hygienic or tainted. Or maybe agriculture can become. Something that, that people can uh, be re can rely on to make a living. Uh, so we need to set broad uh, policies first, secretary. Well, there are multiple objectives for this uh, agricultural policy. On the one hand, we want to meet the demand of local people on uh, quality and safe uh, farm produce. That that's the market demand, market need. And second. Although agriculture is not a big uh, producer of uh, value of uh, GDP, but we still want to make sure that we have a diversified economy. And also, we have to uh, allow some people, some farmers who are interested in uh, doing this, so that they can. Uh, have land, they can get land, they can introduce new technology and improve uh, our soil and, uh, and we want to support them in their operation. And some people may uh, want to be a farmers, uh, which is to them a way of life. I cannot allow you to continue to follow up. Chairman, you can uh, write a letter and uh, and uh, engage uh, the secretary for a for another discussion. Doctor Helena Wong, we have four thousand five hundred and twenty three hectares. And only sixteen percent are cultivated uh, regularly. So eighty percent have been left uh, unused. So the, we have land, agricultural land, but it's not used for agriculture. And people who want to get to use agricultural land cannot get it. And we will 
we have been told that uh, when the government land was uh, granted before 1990, the, the, the Crown land granted were, was not specified for agriculture because of some loopholes. Are, are those sites granted uh, on a permanent basis? Would the lease uh, be coming to an end sometime? Uh, would there be uh, conditions imposed that uh, they would be used for agriculture and not for some other purposes? How can we uh, revive the 84 percent of unused uh, farmland? Whether well, it's a plan for agriculture or not, uh, some land is not used for agri for cu for cultivation. So outside the agricultural park. Uh, how can we make sure that uh, agriculture would be the purpose put to it? How can we revive the use of such uh, land? And that's why Mr. Chan has asked that uh, we involve more than one bureau. Well, the discussion should involve more than a bureau, but this is uh, a policy that under the purview of my bureau. We should take the lead. Uh, of course, uh, we. We have been uh, benefited from the output of other relevant bureaus. We do not rule out doing this outside the scope of the proposed uh, park. Uh, I am not in favor of doing this at the moment. Why? We hope that uh, we would be uh, providing encouragement and support to facilitate the development. Although some people are saying that uh, this the scale is too small, but we want to make it a success first. Instead of uh, trying to penalize people before we are successful with the new model. Of course, uh, people may have different uh, views about this. So you have, you have uh, some. You can resume unused agricultural lands uh, somehow. Is that the case? Well, uh, it's not the case that we can resume unused land like that uh, because they are subject to different leases, and each lease is different. Mm. I just want to be more positive. I just want to. Um, Make it a success first, and that would be a, a, a model, an example that would affect future development. I don't want to adopt a punitive approach right from the start. Secretary, do you think that for agricultural policy, we should set a target for sales, food, food sufficiency, sales sufficiency for food? At present, uh, the scope is such that. Uh, we know that. Uh, can can you f wrap up in two seconds? We do not. We are not in favor of setting a target of on uh, the sufficiency rate. Mr. Michael Tian, after I the team up with uh, Miss Regina Lau in twenty eleven. And uh, then uh, there was the attempt to get nomination for the C election. We have a um, election platform a manifesto saying that uh, in Hong Kong we should go for a uh, high quality and uh, sustainable primary industry. And I'm glad that after. A number of years, the government has decided to take the first step towards the same aim. I would like to mention a few issues. Uh, transportation is inconvenient, and you don't allow people to live that. You cannot really attract individuals to take up farming. You are saying that this is, this concept is for. Farming, you are not providing accommodation, so you are you are expecting the the the, the farmers to rise very early and travel for hours to work on the land. 
、uh, they have to do different things different during different、uh, seasons. Are you going to amend the law to, uh, and uh, do do something about the restrictions so that the、uh, the lessee, the、uh, the farmers who lease land, can live on the land? Secondly, land is scarce in Hong Kong. We may not be able to develop more farmland in Hong Kong. The question is how much. How much、uh, farmland that is、uh, has a potential to be developed? I think you've already answered the question. How are we going to operate this agricultural farm? Are we going to develop, you know, proper quality farms and shouldn't restrict the the farmers、uh, to 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 grow crops? Would you consider subsidising tertiary institutions to conduct studies regarding how we can grow? You know, special crops or crops of high value. I'm interested in food products which don't need to be grown on land. For example, water culture,、uh, salad vegetables that could be water cultured. As you all know, that from the time of、uh, sowing the seeds to harvest, it only takes about 20 days. It's about 50% faster than you know traditional uh, you know uh, vegetables. In Singapore. Uh, uh, they are now, you know, growing such、uh, salad vegetables inside factory buildings and even apartment buildings, and they are about 50% cheaper than imported, you know,、uh, vegetables for salads. You don't need to use farmland in this case. So by using such farmland, if we could develop such types of products, so that we could become self-sufficient in this, in this, these categories of products, only then would we be able to have sustainable development. Would you? Consider that. Forty-eight seconds for a reply. To answer the second question, the simple answer is that, other than agricultural land,、uh, there is that we also have three other proposals. One of which is whether or not we should set up a fund. And if we set up such a fund, I believe that the fund could be applied not just on the agricultural farm. First question. Could the tenant stay on the farm overnight? You don't need to answer the question as to, regarding the tenants having to travel to the farm to work.、Uh, regarding the agricultural farm, if we're going to implement this proposal, we certainly will consider, you know, <clears throat> taking care of the transportation arrangements. Regarding whether the tenants can live in, it will depend on the background of the farmers. I don't think you need to be too detailed.、Uh, we need to stop you.、Uh, secretary will need to leave. Okay, next.、Uh, you can give him a written answer, Mr. Chen Yunhan. I'm sorry, your your question is too long. I'll need to, you know,、uh, stop. I've asked him to speed up, and he's not able to do that, Ms. Chen. I'm not going to argue with you here. Thank you, Chairman. Well, this is a big issue. It's only normal that members are eager to to express their views, and I understand, appreciate it's difficult to chair a meeting like that. Like Michael Tien said,、uh, I welcome the step that the government has now taken.、Uh, we've actually, actually had actually、uh, urged you to do this.、Uh, we also had appeal to Mr. Paul Ho,、uh, Paul Chen. But once you've made a start and started this dialogue, we certainly have a lot of things to to say or suggest to you. Our chairman had agreed that next time we will listen to the deputations for. I've actually. I'm sorry, Miss Chen. I have not agreed that I will be、uh, calling a meeting with the deputation. Some members said that I have received a letter.、Uh, I've not said whether I agree or not agree to do that. Never mind. I think it is、uh, you know understood that we 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 would hold such a meeting to meet with the deputations anyway. And you've wasted one minute of my time. So I welcome your proposal, Secretary. But I think this is only a you know ad hoc solution, using seventy to eighty hectares of the land. I don't think you can satisfy the aspirations of the community. I welcome you making a start with this policy, and I hope you would also、uh, come up with a broader plan and regard this as a preliminary plan. Tell us what you intend to do in the short term and the medium term. Tell us what are your targets regarding water culture and crops to be grown on land and so on. In other Asian Pacific、uh, countries and even in China, it's important that we develop our own products. 
So, what are your immediate, medium, and long-term plans, Mr. Secretary, Chairman? I think when if we launch any policy, we cannot at this stage, uh, you know, uh, uh, include our uh, other possibilities going forward. During the consultation, we will listen to more views, including views put forward by Ms. Chen just now. If we say no, uh, 7 to 80 of hectares of, land, of such land will be developed first. If you want to have further development, you need to come up with necessary measures. And people will say, oh, if you continue with development, you will benefit certain people. And then you have to explain everything clearly to us. Fully understand Ms. Chen's concern. I think, first of all, I don't think I can rule out the possibility of other developments in the future. On the other hand, at this stage, I cannot tell you whether I can acquiesce to your request now. Uh, these are the views that we need to listen during the consultation period. We can only make a decision after we have collected all the views that we've collected and then decide on what the scale should be and the way forward. Chairman, he needs to answer the question. Seven to eighty hectares, you have to decide, find out uh, who own, which developer owns the land, and then you have to be transparent if you want to resume the land and so on. Uh, I will not disagree that you need to consult, but you must have a plan in, in your mind, at, at least. I'm sorry, I, I don't have anything further to that, Chairman. I, I still have time. You say that you're still consulting public, you are not able to answer my question now. Then I think you, I hope you will really listen more to the views of those who really want to engage in farming. And I don't think you should do that. Ms. Alice Matt. I must first of all commend the current administration for coming up with this consultation paper. More and more young people now will be willing to be farmers, except that they want to become modern-day farmers. So going forward, what exactly is the, the, the agricultural farm that the government has in mind? Other than traditional agriculture, uh, have you also considered uh, allowing these so-called modern-day farmers to, 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 to choose to farm on, on such land. Many colleagues have already said, asked whether or not the several dozen hectares of less is sufficient. But as a start, I think at least it's a good start. But I'm worried that... I'm sorry you don't have time, Ms. Mack. The government will consider how it can resolve the problem of land resumption. And also, uh, I'm also worried that some developers are already starting to hoard land. Uh, we're not just talking about the development of agriculture. We're also talking about development in other areas. Some people are already hoarding land for speculative reasons because it's so easy to make money like that. So I, think, I hope the government will really you know, explain this. And if there's time, I hope the Secretary can answer another question question about the ratio of self-sufficiency for farm products in Hong Kong. Why have you not considered doing that? If you can't do it this time, will you do it going forward? Otherwise, uh, I mean, sometimes we claim that we want to learn from Singapore, but then we don't come up with these uh, targets. And I don't think you can, you know, uh, you know, you know, come up with a policy like that. I think modern day farming, as I said, on the agricultural farm, uh, people will lease land from the government, and regarding the mode of operation of such farms, we, we will certainly have some requirements, but we will not rule out the possibility of the, 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 the so-called modern-day farmer model. On land resumption, we understand there might be conflict of interest involved, and therefore, at this stage, we're not revealing the sites that we, we will choose and the price at which we will resume the land. We're only saying that we'll try to get, you know, stay away from sites which will be uh, put to development. And 
your question and Ms. Chen's question. Uh, to answer the two of you, I cannot tell you what uh, we will do at f for the next stage. We have to find out what will be the outcome of what we do uh, during the first stage. And what's going to happen if this uh, agricultural uh, farm is going to be a success or not? We still need to consider what should be the way forward, Mr. Mayor. I understand you. You're saying that we need to do things step by step, but there are certain things that you for which you don't have to wait. For example, whether we should set a self-sufficiency rate for a basic staple foodstuff. If you wait, it might be too long. We think that you know operating an agricultural farm on such a small scale may not be enough uh, to, uh, for us to set a self-sufficiency ratio for farm products for Hong Kong. Dr. K. K. Kok. Thank you. We have 4,000 odd <coughs> hectares of farmland. Since 1995, we've lost 1,300 hectares. The seven hectares the government is now promising us is 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 almost close to nothing. Secretary told us that you won't set any target. If that's the way, I think this is only window dressing on your part. When we criticize the government for not taking care of agriculture or the sustainable development of agriculture, the government will pay lip service and come up with a site uh, uh, of 70 hectares. And this is really a joke. If you look at Singapore, the figure is 1,400 hectares. Same for London. They are me big metropolis. They are also short of land, but they are able to come up with the policy. So other than the 70 hectares, uh, do, does the government have other policies to encourage? Uh, or would you also talk to the Development Bureau so that uh, we still have many farmland which have not yet been converted into uh, uh, brown sites? How can we, for the short and medium term, uh, you know, make sure that they could be uh, uh, reactivated for farming? If you wait until the, 70, uh, you've, uh, until the end of your consultation, Hong Kong will continue to lose uh, our, our agricultural land. I am worried that this project will become uh, uh, it will only be the government only, you know, uh, you know uh, when the government need to resume land in future, they will simply evict the tenants and and uh, and, and, and put them in on, on those sites. Uh, that you've uh, chosen for five years. We'll do, try to do, uh, do the best what we're doing. As to whether or not we, we're also asking the question in this paper as to whether or not we should set up a fund. And this, this fund could be applied not only to the agricultural farm. So the operation of this fund and the support that it could provide, it will be a strong incentive so that for land which is not within this agricultural uh, 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 farm, uh, uh, if they're suitable uh, site, but they don't, they don't have the ability or the ability, then if we could introduce new technologies, then uh, the fund could certainly help such people. As to whether or not the scale we are proposing is just window dressing, my answer to that is no. In exploring the direction for an, our agricultural policy, I believe the first, if we take the first, uh, the correct first step, that it's very important. Hong Kong cannot be like other countries with abundant land, and we cannot adopt the model of massive cultivation. We may do it on on a smaller scale. So how can we uh, achieve that on the agricultural uh, farm? Chairman. My second question is this. Looking at the output and so on and the value, I think the livestock industry and, uh, and the pig farmers are using less land, uh, whereas the value of the product is higher compared with those who grow vegetables and flowers. Does the government have plans to allocate land to uh, to uh, poultry farmers and pig farmers? 
for poultry farming. Well, because we need to contain an outbreak of avian flu, therefore we have to limit the scale. So, uh, Secretary, I believe we, we won't be able to allow you to answer the question. Our time is out already, so I declare the meeting adjourned.